Hey, what's the crack? Welcome to or back to the channel. In today's episode, I just wanted to quickly share some insight that I've gained over the last few years of being a videographer. And it's in relation to the use of a wireless lapel transmitter receiver kit. In short, this video is about how you can use this basic piece of bandage to be a poor man's transmitter pouch belt. To help you understand what a transmitter pouch belt is and why you should probably have one in your kit, we'll take a look at a more kind of high-end fit-for-purpose version of this from Ursa Straps. Now, the first thing worth noting here is that these go for a little under $40, whereas my bandages, for example, cost me one euro and 50 cent. All these straps are is an elasticated strap that goes around your subject's waist. There will be a piece of Velcro to secure that strap and on it will be a pouch. And that pouch itself is also elasticated. So your transmitter will sit quite snugly in there if it's in and around the correct size. The main reason that you are going to need something like this in your kit is typically going to be when miking up someone whose clothing doesn't exactly promote easy securing of a transmitter too. So some examples of this would be a person wearing a dress, a boiler suit, a jumpsuit, or even a onesie. And this is where our little bandage comes in. So it basically does the same thing. It's an elasticated piece of material that you can wrap around your subject's waist, and this will give you somewhere to clip your transmitter onto. Now this particular sample shot is pretty much how you shouldn't put the transmitter onto the subject. Uh, it's just to get the point across. I was filming myself, trying to mic myself. It's not that easy. So for the rest of this, we'll switch over to my pelly case as a stand-in subject's torso. The trick for me with using a bandage to do this is you want to make sure that the bandage is long enough that you can get four or five minimum kind of rotations around the person's torso so they have several layers to work with. The first reason is for when you are putting your transmitter on, you can put the transmitter kind of facing in and it'll end up clipping onto material but it will also be wedged between layers of material giving a little bit of extra security. The second reason this is beneficial is you have some extra layers to leave a neat coil of excess cable in and this is like a safety bit of slack in your lapel wire. You see if you just taped this down and took all the slack out of the wire and your subject bends over the most likely thing that will happen is the microphone the actual capsule that you have taped onto your subject probably somewhere on the chest is probably going to get yanked off the subject. If you're using a transmitter like mine where there's nothing to secure the audio jack going in to the transmitter, the other end might get yanked out. Either way, you've got a problem on your hands. So by utilizing this technique, which is very easy to pull off with the extra layers of the bandage, you create this bit of safety slack in the lines should your subject bend over. It'll eat into the slack of that coil rather than actually yanking on the cable at either end. One more piece of advice that I would give when picking up a bandage or a few bandages is to go for as kind of thick as you can, not thick as in this thickness, uh, I suppose as wide as you can, because that width is pretty much directly proportional to how comfortable you can expect this to be on your subject or on your talent. And if they're going to be wearing this for a few hours or even all day. You don't want this narrow band kind of digging into their waist because you have to secure it reasonably tightly. So my advice is, you know, get as wide a band as you can afford. Now I couldn't make this video without making it crystal clear to you that there is of course downsides to going with this cheap workaround solution. So the first thing is that there is no Velcro on these bandages. So you're either going to be left using these default hook style of kind of things, uh, which depending on how thick the bandage is or how many times you've managed to wrap it around your subject, those hooks could easily completely penetrate the material and start scratching into your subject's skin, which is obviously not ideal. So you may end up also having to purchase some medical tape to secure the bandage once it's wrapped around your subject. The next thing is that your transmitter is not nearly as secure from a falling and breaking standpoint as it would be with a fit for purpose 
pouch and pouch strap. So keep that in mind with this, that you are increasing the risk of damaging your equipment. And then the last thing is bandages only come in the one color, which is Caucasian skin tone. Whereas the proper Ursa straps, they come in multiple skin tones. So the downside to this is depending on your subject's clothing, if you're not matching the strap to the subject's skin tone, that strap could become visible under clothing, especially under harsh lighting conditions. So again, it's something worth keeping in mind when deciding to utilize this workaround solution. So in the words of Forrest Gump, that's all I have to say about that. I do hope that you found at least one part of that video helpful. And if you did, please do consider giving the video a like as well as subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell. Have a good one and I hope to see you in the next video. We came to fight.